Hey friends, Pastor Dave here for another evening devotional. Let's go to Romans chapter 14 and talk about what the Bible really means when it says we shouldn't pass judgment on one another. I like the joke about the guy that finally gets rescued after years and years living on a deserted island. And as they're pulling him off the island, they notice there's three huts. And they say, well, why did you build three huts when you were the only one on the island? And he said, well, that first hut is where I lived. The second hut is where I go to church. And I spend my time in there worshiping God. And they said, well, what's the third hut? And he said, well, that's where I used to go to church. It's kind of funny because it's true. And we laugh because otherwise we'd cry that it's so hard to keep the peace between people. And it's so hard to have love for those that we disagree with. And we see that happen all the time. How many churches have been started because of splits, because of people disagreeing with issues? When I was growing up, the big issue in the church was the charismatic movement. There was this movement that said we had de-emphasized the Holy Spirit and anything supernatural and the gifts of the Holy Spirit including the sign gifts like speaking in tongues and healing and uh, prophecy and that these gifts should be given more prominence and some people were secessionists saying that those gifts uh, the sign gifts were just for the apostolic age when when the original 12 apostles lived on this earth and others uh, continuationists they said that they believed that the gifts should continue and that there was no reason to believe that they had stopped and and you know what I think I think they were both wrong in fact that I, I think they were both wrong because of the way they dealt with each other churches split and and often it was pre preceded by just the most obvious signs of the charismatic movement where somebody would start to raise their hands in church. And when you saw that, you'd say, oh no, it's starting here. We're going to have an argument. And then one part of the church is going to be saying, oh, you guys are all dead because you don't believe that God still does these miracles. And the other side is going to be saying, you guys are all just making up all this hocus pocus stuff and and you're just going crazy and pretty soon a large group's going to leave and start another church and that happened again and again and again and I think they were both wrong I'm not a secessionist I believe that God still acts in this world and he acts in material he acts in um, miraculous ways I do have a theological difference with the core of what I believe is the charismatic movement the charismatic movement teaches that there are two um, levels of salvation. First you accept Jesus Christ and he is your savior, but then you have to ask for the Holy Spirit and for the gifts and, and many of them, not all of them, but many of them say that the only sign of the Holy Spirit baptizing you is the, the gift of tongues, that you can speak in a language that you don't know. Number one, no gift is given to everybody so I reject that and and the Bible teaches that tongues is not one of the greater gifts so if there was one gift that was given to everybody it wouldn't be tongues the gifts of the Spirit are, are given out to people as God chooses the fruit of the Spirit is given to everybody everybody who accepts Jesus Christ is given the fruit of the Spirit Plus, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not a second blessing. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is how we get to be a Christian. We were baptized by one spirit into one body. That's what the Bible says. There, there may be times that God fills you with the Spirit in a special way, for a special time, for a special purpose. But there is one baptism for each person. And that is when they become a believer in the first place. And everybody has that who accepts Jesus Christ. God doesn't hold back that blessing for some people. Now, others may disagree with me. And here's my point. The greatest failure in that whole argument was that they couldn't find a way to live together. And they split church after church after church. Didn't matter who was right on that issue. 
they were wrong because the one thing that should have been a characteristic of the Holy Spirit should have been their love for each other. And they all failed at that, or they wouldn't have split. Romans chapter 14, starting at verse 13, says, Therefore let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, being fully persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself, but if anyone regards it as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. What, what Paul is saying here is, there may be things that you can do with a clear conscience, and you're okay with it, and God's okay with it, except for one thing. In the way you practice your freedom, you may be building a wall between you and somebody else. And if you do that, it's not worth it. The old brethren had a saying, in essentials, unity. Meaning, the things that are the core of our faith, we're going to have unity. If somebody doesn't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that he died for our sins, those are essentials of the faith. If they don't believe that, then, you know, we can love them, but they're not a Christian. In essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. If you believe that you should be baptized one time backwards by immersion, if you believe you should be baptized three times forward in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, as we do it in the Brother Church, or if you believe you should be sprinkled. I know where I believe and, and what I think the Bible teaches. But that's a non-essential. And you have liberty, and I will still call you a brother or sister if you disagree with me on that. If you're charismatic, I'll still call you brother and sister. So in essentials, unity. In non-essentials, liberty. And in all things, charity. In every argument we have, we should keep in mind that the core of our faith is love. They will know we are Christians by our love. They'll know we're disciples of Christ if we love one another. And if we violate that, then it doesn't matter if we're right or wrong in the argument. We're wrong. There are a lot of people arguing today. Let's make sure that we stay out of the arguments. If we can discuss these issues in love, wonderful. But if we find we can't, then we need to leave it lie. Let's speak the truth in love, as the Bible teaches us to, and show the world it can be done. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful teachings of the Bible that are so appropriate for today. Father, if the world would just give their lives to you, uh, this world would almost be heaven already. Thank you, Father, for your wisdom and guidance. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Have a good night. I love you all. Take care.